for yeah. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for joining daily call. So today, Guru Maharaj will continue to enlighten us on the topic uh, pure devotional service from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela, chapter 22, verse uh, 106. Hare Krishna. I'll Thank go you. Hare Krishna. I'll go ahead and share Guru Maharaj. Just two minutes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'll turn it over to you. Hare Krishna. Jaya Jaya Sri Sri Tanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakti Vinda Shravanari Kriyatara Sarupa Lakshana Tathasta Lakshane Upajaya Premadana the spiritual activities of hearing, chanting, remembering, and so forth are the natural characteristics of devotional service. The marginal characteristic is that it awakens pure love for Krishna. Nip Yasiddha Krishna Prema Savya Kabunoi Shravanadi Subhichite Kodiye Udoi Pure love for Krishna is eternally established in the hearts of the living entities. It is not something to be gained from another source. When the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, this love awakens. So in these two verses, we see that they're very much connected that simply by hearing and chanting, one is performing the activities of devotional service and pure love awakens. That pure love is there in the heart of all living entities. All living entities are by nature part and parcel of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Pure love is not something to be learned, to be gained, to be bartered, to be created. It is there automatically in the hearts of all living entities. In other words, to love Krishna is natural. <clears throat> Not to love Krishna is unnatural. <laughs> it's simple as that. In this material world, the most natural thing we do is breathe. It's so natural we don't even think of it. It just goes on. So we might use that comparison that to love Krishna when the heart is awakened purely from all material contamination. Its nature manifests and that nature is pure love for Krishna. <laughs> this is something essential to understand because we think that we have to gain or bring it in or cre create it. There's nothing you have to do to create it. You, all you have to do is uncover it. <laughs> it's like if you have a treasure that's buried. The treasure is there. It's the way it is. But because it's buried, people are not able to access it or take advantage of it. 
but as soon as the uncoverings or it uh, comes out of its covering, then everyone can benefit and take advantage of it. So pure love for Krishna is natural. <laughs> this we have to understand because if we think it's something foreign to our existence and has to be created or manufactured or, or anything other than uncovering it, awakening it, revealing it, then we have lost the understanding of our nature. Our nature is to love Krishna. And when you understand that, you understand that anything, if you're not in love with Krishna or experiencing that love for Krishna, you're still in an unnatural state. Not under natural state is our conditioned state, our material existence. And so when that material existence is diminished and removed, <laughs> this love naturally awakens. Okay, next verse. Etad sadhana bhakti, duitad pakara, ekavadi bhakti raganuga, bhakti ara. Now we hear about the two kinds of devotional service in sadhana bhakti. There are two processes of practical devotional service. So practical devotional service means sadhana bhakti. One is regulative devotional service. The other is spontaneous devotional service. So regulative devotional service is following the rules and regulations uh, according to scripture, according to guru. When you follow that, you know, such it says that, for instance, every day it's mentioned that when you wake up, you have prepared yourself for your morning activities. So you might find that the awkward when it begins. So, but the regulation is there and you follow that and you do it. When you become accustomed to doing it and you start to enjoy doing it, you reach a higher stage where it becomes natural to get up, to prepare yourself and to chant Hare Krishna. It becomes so natural that you're actually eagerly uh, performing the activity. So I guess you might say, you know, what would be a nice, a nice material example is a child has to learn to walk, but the walking propensity is in the child already. It comes out by practice. So the mother is holding the child by the hands and the child is trying to walk. Sometimes it falls, the mother picks it up. Sometimes it walks a couple steps and then it falls again. And so it's awkward for the child at that stage. He gets a little older, the nature, the natural propensity for walking starts to happen. And that would be compared to spontaneous devotional service. Then at one point, walking becomes natural. At one point, devotional service becomes spontaneously executed or naturally executed. It becomes part of us. It's no longer just practicing the rules and the regulations. Okay. Ragahina Janabhaje Shastreya Agyaya Bhadi Bhakti Balitare Sarva Shastra Gaya. Those who have not attained the platform of spontaneous attachment to devotional service render devotional service under the guidance of the bona fide spiritual master according to the irregulative principles mentioned in the revealed scriptures. According to the revealed scriptures, this kind of devotional service is called. Bhairi Bhakti, for the Prabhupada's purport. So here, we're explaining what we explained a little bit more 
in the previous verse. In the beginning, one has to hear from the bona fide spiritual master. This is favorable for advancing in devotional service. According to this process, one hears, chants, remembers, engages in deity worship, acting under the directions of the spiritual master. These are the essential primary activities of devotional service. Devotional service must not be executed for some material purpose. One should not even have a desire to merge into the absolute truth. One has to render such service out of love only. Devotional service must be without ulterior motives. Then material conditions cannot check it. So this is a point in point. Material conditions cannot check devotional service if it's done simply according to the instructions of the spiritual master. Gradually, one can rise to the platform of spontaneous love and service. Hmm. Gradually. Prabhupada uses the example. A child is sent to school by force to receive an education. But when he gets a little taste for education at an advanced age, he automatically participates and becomes a learned scholar. It cannot force a person to become a scholar, but sometimes force is used in the beginning. The child is forced to go to school and read and write according to the instructions of the teachers. Such is the difference between Vaidhi Bhakti and spontaneous Bhakti. So Prabhupada uses a similar but different example to show the difference between these two uh, stages of bhakti. Uh, one vaidhi means rules and regulations, spontaneous means, well, what it is, spontaneous, natural, attractive. Dormant love for Krishna exists in everyone's heart, and it simply has to be awakened by the process of devotional service. One has to learn to use a typewriter by following the regulative principles of the typing book. One has to place his fingers on the keys in such a way and practice. But when one's adept, he can type swiftly and correctly even without looking at the keys. Similarly, one has to follow the rules and regulations of devotional service as they are set down by the spiritual master. Then one can come to the point of spontaneous loving service. This love is already there within the heart of everyone, Nitya Siddha, Krishna Prema. Spontaneous service is not artificial. One has to come to that platform by rendering devotional service according to the regulative principles. Thus, one has to practice hearing and chanting and following the other regulative principles by washing the temple, cleansing oneself, rising early in the morning, attending Mangal Arti, and so on. If one does not come to the platform of spontaneous devotion, spontaneous service in the beginning, he must adopt regulative service according to the instructions of the spiritual master. This regulative service is called Vaidhi Bhakti. Hmm. Namaste, Sarasvati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, near Rishesa Sunyavadi, Pastyatya De Satarine. Panchakalpa Tarugas Chakri Pasindu Veva Chapatitanam Pavane Gyo Vaishnava Gyo Namaho Jai Sri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we are uh, seeing 
how that this that this devotional service happens in stages. One cannot simply jump to the higher stages. It's a process. The process is fortified by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And as Prabhupada said, following the other regulative principles as given by the spiritual master. We were seeing something very interesting here. And we're explaining something very interesting. Bhakti is a science. And that science uh, uncovers this natural law. Unless one follows prescribed duties, one cannot uncover the natural law. Just like you might say, when you go into a laboratory to make an experience, you have to have the ingredients for the experiment, for the experiment, and you have to have the laboratory conditions that are conducive to doing experience, experiment, experiment. So the ingredients is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And the laboratory conditions would be that one should not perform devotional service for any material gain. One should perform devotional service as an offering to Krishna in devotion. So that's the laboratory atmosphere, the proper mood, and the ingredients, hearing and chanting. When these things are in place, then gradual but steady progress is, awake, is practice where that natural love for Krishna starts to manifest. So we see it can be compared to a great science mm -hmm. or an experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, the desired goal has to be there at the beginning, although sometimes it's not. Uh, but in one sense, it doesn't really matter if it's not there at the very beginning, but at one point one should learn what is the goal of devotion and service, and that is to awaken our natural love for Krishna. Sometimes we see people come to devotional service for material reasons, and Krishna speaks about that in the Bhagavad Gita, that because of distressful material life, one becomes uh, frustrated trying to enjoy this material world, and uh, they turn to the spiritual life to uh, find some soulless, some relief from this struggle of material existence. That is acceptable because Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, four kinds of people come to me. Turn to that verse, it's in Bhagavad Gita chapter seven, verse number 16. Bhagavad Gita 7, 16. Mm. Here you go. Here you got it. Come on down again. Let's see the Sanskrit. Let's see. Yeah. Chatur Vidya Bhajate Mam Jnana Sukriti Jor Sukritor Juna Arto Jagyasur RRT Jnana Chabarata Sabha. Oh, best among the bars, four kinds of pious men begin to render devotional service unto me the distress, the desires of wealth, the inquisitive, and he who is searching for knowledge of the absolute truth. So go down the page a little bit. Out of these four classes of men, there's there's some there's sometimes distress, need of money, inquisitive, and those who are searching for the absolute truth. 
These persons come to the devotional service for, under different conditions. They are not pure devotees, but they have, we can have some aspiration and they exchange for devotional service. But then Prabhupada goes on. Now these, Krishna allows these four people to come and perform devotional service. But after performing devotional service, under the guidance of the spiritual masters, they should come to the next stage here. Ayavila Sita Sunya, Yana Karmana Nandrita, Anukulena Krishna Silam, Bhakti Uttamam. Uh, one should render transcendental loving service to deceive Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit, for gains through food of activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. When these four persons come to the Supreme Lord, they are completely purified by the association of pure devotees, and they also become pure. Okay. So Krishna is giving these, this is concessionary. Uh, and therefore he allows people to come for different reasons. But then again, they must eventually learn what is the real goal of devotional service and not keep their material reasons for coming as the goal in the activities of devotional service. And then Prabhupada will explain that out of the four, one who is searching for knowledge of the absolute truth is already situated in the right consciousness and that person will progress fa fa faster through the by the activities of devotional service. Okay. Now, but we sometimes we see that people who do come uh, for the one of these four reasons, or actually mostly the first two reasons, the distress. Uh, we find that many devotees in our Krishna conscious movement had come because of distress. Material energy is geared to cause distress. <laughs> so to feel distressful in, in pursuit of material happiness is natural. People will feel distress. <laughs> this material happiness is not happiness. And the struggle to get a, a little drop of that satisfaction causes much distress. So when a person is a little bit sensitive to what is happening, they move towards spiritual life to mitigate their distress. But then again, they have to come and understand ultimately what is the goal of devotional service. Relieving distress is a byproduct it's not the goal. Just like you go to work, you have a job, and uh, you sign up and you get your position. And part of the position is that you get two weeks every year in the summertime off as a vacation time. So you don't go to work to get two weeks off for a vacation. <laughs> That's not the purpose of going to work. That, that vacation given by the employer is simply a benefit that comes by way of the occupation you, you're performing. So in the same way, uh, the distress that's relieved from devotional service is not the goal of devotional service, but it's a byproduct of devotional service. But the goal is to develop pure love of God and same with the other uh, persons who are motivated by something material. People come for economic gain. Uh, that's not the benefit. Economic gain is not the goal of devotional service. <laughs> but it does ha happen in many cases, Krishna provides economic uh, uh, reciprocation. In other words, he gives material things because just to satisfy his devotee in, in different ways. So um, 
this, this verse here is important to understand in relationship to our execution of devotional service. Our motivation must be to awaken pure love for Krishna. That is the only goal of devotional service. And there are intermediate goals to reach that goal. And that can be discussed in further statements where uh, situating yourself on different levels of practice and aspiring for those different levels as you perform your devotional service are the intermediate goals which are in line with the ultimate goal. They lead to the ultimate goal, but one should not accept even the intermediate goals as the goal. Uh, intermediate goal means to be very, say, to, to be very learned in the scriptures. One becomes very learned. Uh, studying scriptures, can recite scriptures, can inspire others in, in their knowledge of the scriptures. But that is simply, that is not a goal. That's an intermediate goal that can be used to further one's ultimate goal. But it is not the goal like that. Or being freed from material distress. These are all intermediate goals. Okay, so these are some of the points in the execution of pure devotional service. So return to our original text and we can uh, actually, we can stop here and open it up for comments and questions. You can go back to the gallery and we humbly request all the devotees to manifest their their transcendental forms in the form of pushing the button, which says, here I am in person. <laughs> now you're seeing my name, but now you can see me. Uh, okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the very nice class on how to awaken the pure love of Krishna. Thank you so much. Um, dear devotees, uh, uh, please go ahead and... Uh, um, uh, unmute yourself uh, or you can raise your hand uh, if you have any questions or comments uh, please uh, do share yeah. thank you Hare Krishna Okay, we have all the gopis online here. All of the cowherd boys keep their cameras off and all the gopis put their cameras on, so. Okay. Sumitra, welcome. Mm -hmm. Miss Hare Krishna Maharaj. <laughs> okay, we have Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Like we can see his eyes, but that's all. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. Okay. You're sick? A little bit, Guru Maharaj, yes. Kids are sick, and uh, so I'm conscious of the symptoms. So, you know, precautionary, I'm just... You know. Okay. Make sure you can breathe. Yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we'll take questions, comments, suggestions, uh, uh, proposed corrections, mm -hmm. whatever you want to offer. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, very much. I don't see any questions. Uh, is it okay? Can I start a question? Like, um, um, good much. Thank you so much for this class. Uh, like, as you said, like uh, two process of devotional service, uh, regulative devotional service and spontaneous devotional service. So we can come to spontaneous devotional service by uh, practicing rules and regulations um, laid down by spiritual master. So uh, we are doing, we are practicing that uh, devotional service, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so usually, uh, mm, 
uh, it depends like uh, uh, because sometimes uh, we feel like we've been practicing but still like we are not there yet so it depends like how much conditioning we have in the heart or like how does like you know the conditioning will go away well you are you're learning how to shoot a bow and arrow so you never had bow and arrow training before so you have to learn how to pull back the string and you pull back putting the arrow in the right place knowing how to stand properly knowing uh, how to uh, gradually uh, bring your eye into the target and how to pull the bow bow back when to release the bow you know, the, the, the teacher has given you all of this instructions so but then there's people who have had previous training so they know all of this stuff already so they come right into it and uh, their my main goal is learning how to hit the target uh, in an expert way although they have so devotees start devotional service on different levels it's not that everyone comes to devotional service on the same level some of us have had previous devotional service in the past life some are just coming for the first time in this life uh, others have had previous devotional service in, in many lives <laughs> So uh, what becomes natural for some becomes a practice for others. And so we're starting on different levels, but still everyone has to practice and assuming that we all need to learn the principles of the execution of devotional service. So you'll see that some people naturally, easily, and very quickly pass through this, the regulative stage and reach the spontaneous stage and others may take years and sometimes never reach it even in a whole lifetime. So um, devotional, again, devotional service is like uh, walking or we can use the example Srila Prabhupada. Um, you'll see that some children, they go to school and he, they love their school, they absorb their subjects, and they get good marks fast. Others are going to school, they're also trying their best, but they can't learn as easy and their marks are not as good. So the individuals are different based on their previous uh, lifestyles and previous training, previous experiences. So, um, but everyone has to follow the process. So you'll see some will go faster through the process and others will take more time. So um, therefore we should always understand that if the process is authorized, it's been tested, it's been practiced, it's been shown to be uh, foolproof. If we have faith in the process and just stick to the process, and then at one point, now this is a very important part of our discussion, one has to begin to practice the rules and regulations of spontaneous devotional service. Now, those rules and regulations are different were more advanced than the rules and regulations that come with Vaidhi Bhakti. And there's a way, recommended way to do, it, to do that in order to get the benefit. Uh, so in order for us to progress, we have to see, uh, are we actually coming to that stage of becoming naturally attracted to Krishna and devotion? As we're reaching that stage, then we engage in spontaneous devotional service sadhana, or ragamuka sadhana, or ragabhakti sadhana, it's called. 
and then one will execute the process even faster. So if you want to read about Raganuga Sadhana, you'll find it in Prabhupada's books, especially in Chaitanya Charitamrita. But you will we'll probably also come to it in this chapter. I'm pretty sure it's there in the upcoming verses. It'll describe Raganuga Sadhana. But for those of you who are interested in finding out more about Raganuga Sadhana, there is a nice book that was published by His Holiness Shiva Ram Swami called Spontaneous Devotional Service. And he goes through the whole science explaining what is necessary and some of the features of it. So uh, if you can get that book, it's a little, it's a small paperback book. It's not very big at all. And that's actually not paperback. It's a small hardcover book. And it's very uh, uh, to the point. And it talks about spontaneous devotional service. Um, in our Krishna consciousness society, we have never put emphasis on spontaneous devotional service, where other, other bhakti societies give more importance to spontaneous devotional service. So um, it's important because the nature of the, Lord, the living entity's devotion to Krishna is spontaneous. So we must eventually move through the stages of sadhana bhakti and come to spontaneous devotional service. So I would recommend you read, study, and learn more about spontaneous devotional service, and then get guidance from your spiritual master on how to practice that. And then you can also move quickly to the higher stage because uh, Devotional service or bhakti yoga is divided into three categories. The first one is sadhana bhakti, which contain, contains raganuga bhakti and vaiti bhakti, the two we talked about tonight. And then we have baba bhakti, it's the next stage of devotional service. And then you have prema bhakti. So there are Nectar Devotion describes these three categories and the different stages in each of the categories. Mm -hmm. So learn the science. Therefore, I, I highly recommend devotees read and study Bhakti Rasama to Sindhan Nectar of Devotion. This is a book that must be read, must be studied because it explains in detail with many examples, the whole science the devotional service like that. Especially the first 19 chapters are fundamental for our practice of devotional service. There's commentaries on that also uh, called Waves of Devotion by one devotee in our movement known as, uh, what's his name? Uh, Danadar. I think his name is Danadar. Danadar, yeah. Danadar, Danadar Swami. He's written a beautiful book called Waves of Devotion, which is a really a nice critique on Bhakti Rusamba to Sindhu explaining it in more intricate details. So it's a great science. By reading and studying these different treatises, these books, you can see where you are and where you need to go. <laughs> It becomes completely our, or you can ask your spiritual master, where are you? And he'll tell you where you need to go. <laughs> but nobody asks the spiritual master because they're afraid that he'll tell them something as far as where they need to go, that they don't like, <laughs> so they don't ask. <laughs> but if you don't know where you need to go, then wherever you're going may not be where you need to go. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah. Is that clear? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I need to do a lot of study. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, Srimati. <laughs> Yeah. Please accept my humble obeisances, all to Shri Prabhupada. 
Thank you so much for the wonderful class, Guru Maharaj. Um, I was listening to your yesterday's class, uh, Sunday feast class in the temple. Um, you were um, giving the uh, example of um, Saumya Datri Mataji's um, um, experience of uh, in Vrindavan, uh, where Srila Prabhupada allowed her to um, put the garland. So I was thinking um, uh, that, uh, so Krishna automatically listens to our heart. Um, so is it every time Guru Maharaj or like once we come into the devotional service, um, then only Krishna starts listening to us or the Paramatma in our heart starts listening to us. Uh, how is it Guru Maharaj? Like, is it that that we have connect, uh, established a connection with the, uh, Krishna um, at that point? Yeah, but there's also the mood of humility has to be there. Because of the mode of humility, Krishna favors that particular devotee who wants to serve in a certain way. If one wants to serve in a certain way, but the mood of humility has not developed in that desire, that devotee may not get the opportunity. And humility attracts the attention of the Lord to fulfill one's desire. Humility also means detachment from, in other words, whatever Krishna wants, that's, that's the proper move. Yeah, I want to share. I think um, I, used, I used two examples. I used Soma Dhatri and then there was another example, but I can't remember what, what I said prior to that. Yes, good match. Uh, even I don't remember that. Um, I I was more connected to some Vedatri Mataji's example um, because uh, I I had this same type of experience, <clears throat> which um, I want to share. <clears throat> if you uh, give me yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I just want to share uh, with all the devotees and yours, your Holiness uh, that one time what happened um, in our Zoom calls. Um, on the day Vrinda Mataji was hosting and uh, usually our uh, daily our class starts at 10 o'clock East uh, Central Time and I had a doctor appointment at 10.45 and I thought I'll join uh, the class and uh, listen to the half of the session and then just leave the meeting and go to my doctor appointment and I informed Vrinda Mataji also about that she said okay then what happened when you joined the class um, there was an audio problem on your side and uh, <clears throat> And uh, you are able to, uh, you are not able to listen, hear us. Uh, we can, we are able to hear you. But even though you logged off and logged in twice and uh, the problem didn't solve. Then we thought, then you said that I'll continue the class because we are able to hear you. So, but I got into anxiety, <laughs> like, um, because um, now Guru Maharaj audio is not working and uh, sorry, he, he can't hear us. And um, now if anybody asks questions, after the class, what should we do? And Vrinda Mataji is also already in confusion, what should we do? <laughs> then I said that I'm leaving in 20 minutes, then how do we manage Mataji? She's telling if you are there, then it will be nice. Then I was thinking, oh, Krishna, I have a doctor appointment now. <laughs> I have to go, what <laughs> do I do? <laughs> then suddenly I got a call in five minutes, I got a call that uh, doctor wants to postpone the uh, appointment. <laughs> So I was so surprised to receive that call. <laughs> I was so surprised to receive that call, Guru Manas. But usually doctors don't cancel like that or don't postpone like that. So it was all Krishna's arrangement, seeing my anxiety and uh, <clears throat> Mataji's confusion. So he got and he gave me an opportunity to serve you on that day. So <clears throat> that was my... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Obviously, your desire to serve was greater than your desire to get medically treated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so. Oh, yeah. Day, yeah, 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 yeah. That's just Krishna. For Krishna, that's nothing. He can do that easy. He just tells the doctor, uh, uh, change the appointment. And the doctor thinks that he's thinking about that. Just, <laughs> Like we get, I, a lot of times we get ideas in our mind and we think, oh, that's a good idea. But it's Krishna who puts the idea there. <laughs> yeah. 
That's too good much. Um, yeah. Thank you. That's a I, nice one. I'm sure each devotee has some kind of little innuendo or some story that is similar. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. It's so nice. Diptesh, ask a question or give us a little bit of your realizations about what we've been speaking about, even if it's not in the form of a question. Anas, thank you. Um, please accept my humble obeisances. All to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, I think uh, I have been, uh, it's been a while since I've attended the lecture, um, but it felt really good because it was about devotional service and I always struggled, not struggle, but theoretically knew about the spontaneity of, the, of devotional service. Um, you know, what does it mean to be spontaneous uh, devotional service? And uh, it... it it's something that I realized when I went to uh, two places of pilgrimage while I'm in India. I went to Nath Dwara, Srinaji in Rajasthan. And uh, I, when I saw the devotees there, when they were lining up to see the Lord and the, their expression of spontaneity for the Lord, uh, it helped me understand a little bit about what spontaneous devotional service could look like or, or, or emotionally. Um, and, and that was a nice experience for me. And that, and, and today's class was uh, distinguishing the service uh, from, the, it's still in Sadhana Bhakti, but you know, not under the regulation, but the spontaneous, the spontaneity uh, element. So that is something that I realized, or I, I had a small glimpse when I went to this place as a pilgrimage when I was in India, Maharaj. Mm. Yeah. In India, you'll find people are spontaneously attracted to seeing the deity, serving the deity, offering prayers to the deity, uh, offering gifts to the deity. Yeah, it's natural. Uh, those who are born in India are, have that natural bhakti that is there. And it comes out in a very spontaneous way. <coughs> so, yeah. And then when, when we come to the West, then <laughs> something else happens. <laughs> we, got, we get spontaneously attracted to IT uh, positions <laughs> instead of Krishna. <laughs> but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> so yeah, you, we can experience spontaneity in different facets of life, just like, so you can think of your favorite food and tonight your wife's gonna cook it and she tells you it's gonna be the meal tonight. So you're spontaneously already geared up to, uh, you know, experience that uh, gift coming from your wife's desire to please you by giving you your favorite. <laughs> And so she doesn't have to call you. You keep asking her, is it ready yet? <laughs> so that's spontaneously. That's an example of spontaneity on a material platform. <laughs> Sumitra likes to cook pizza. And then she always tells me, Mara, it's to come over for pizza. And then my, sponta my spontaneous uh, Raganuga pizza mood starts to manifest. And then the rest is experience. <laughs> so yeah, we, we have spontaneity for, for things in the material world. That's true. But that spontaneity is the nature of the love within the heart of the devotee. And it has different degrees of, of, of exposure. Mm. You'll see some people are taking darshan of the Lord and others are rushing to the temple to get that darshan. <laughs> yeah. mm. Thank you. 
nice example. Maharaj, I have a question as well. And the question is, uh, do is there always a progression from regulative uh, regulative uh, devotional service into spontaneity Prabhupada makes that Prabhupada makes that point in one of the verses from the purple we were reading where he says some people actually actually begin their devotional service on a spontaneous level and that is simply due to experiences of with devotional service in previous lives. Uh, it manifests in this life, and as soon as it's just like, um, you know, what would be an example? I'm trying to think of it. I, uh, um, if you try to light wood and it's wet, uh, it'll take a time before it dries out and then it ignites. But when the wood is really dry, simply by putting the fire near the wood, the wood immediately catches fire. <laughs> so in the same way, there are devotees in their previous lives who have practiced devotional service. As soon as they come in contact with the atmosphere of devotional service again, Immediately, they are spontaneously attracted to the activities of devotional service. Uh, so everyone is covered on, on to a certain degree due to their association with matter, some more and some less. You can't, that's why to categorize everyone in the same level, would be artificial but the process is geared that if one is already uh, attracted to krishna on a spontaneous level it will manifest simply by the activities of devotional service and the association of the devotees. others will find it awkward they may be a little attracted for some reason, but they will find it awkward. And then they'll go, they'll take more time for them to progress through devotional service. And then there's those who have misconceptions that are also part of their uh, uh, experiences in, in previous lives when they carry them into devotional service. <clears throat> Just like there are people who have this misconception about gurus um, they they like devotional service they chant they read they attend the lectures they actually um, uh, even do service but they don't get a spiritual master and you can't convince them to get a spiritual master so they have this block it's an authoritative block, uh, the, uh, the block of authoritarianism that someone should be in, in between me and Krishna or uh, the idea of an authority telling me what to do becomes a feature of their stagnation in devotional service. And because of that, they don't progress. <laughs> They'll be around devotional service for years, but they never take the spiritual master. And I, I can name a long list of people that I've been around for years and I still see they're at that stage. For whatever reason, it may be something karmic in the last life, which is a good chance it is, or maybe an experience in this life with authority. And they don't take that next stage of accepting a spiritual master. Which is one of the stages of, of devotional service. One of the required stages of devotional service. I mean, I've seen people for 20 years. Uh, 
In fact, la last night when I was in the temple, I, there's one devotee, he was there. And I know him really good and he's, he's, he's been around for, <laughs> you know, 20, 25 years in devotional service. Comes to the temple, chants, likes to serve, likes to associate, but don't talk about guru, spiritual master to him. He'll completely change the subject. <laughs> He's not interested. <laughs> I like him. He's a nice, nice person. <laughs> but you know that block is there, and because of that block, they they can't progress beyond a certain point. Thank you, Maharaj, for clarifying. Yeah, so you'll see uh, each person is an individual and the process is for everyone, but how people take to the process based on their previous experiences, their present experiences, and their present association, all of that is all factors on how fast people will progress. So that might be an answer to uh, Suda's question, how do we know? And so there's so many dynamics that are coming by way of one's karma, both in this life and in previous lives, along with the association in this life. But the process works. If we stick to the process, we'll get through all of these um, karmic uh, influences and transcend them and come to the stage of spontaneous devotional service. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, we have Namrata. Namrata is asking a yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mataji, please go ahead. Okay. Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glorious to Shri Prabhupada. Um, Maharaj, uh, I think I almost got the answer what I wanted to ask, but still, um, I just wanted to ask you with an example. Like, uh, right from the childhood, I have been seeing that uh, we visit the temple of uh, uh, Ranchorji at Dapur. And whenever uh, we go to the temple, I see tears in my mother's eyes. Always, I used to see. And uh, I, used, I was always mesmerized with the thing. But from last few years, even I feel that same emotion. And uh, uh, while praying to uh, God, uh, when I come out of the temple, it automatically, you know, I stop those, I could stop those tears. But when I see the deity, uh, those tears just flow out. So, uh, but still, if I talk uh, about my mother, uh, she is not still able to, uh, you know, take up the devotional service in a, uh, in a, uh, you know, rules and regulations way, or maybe uh, as you told, she has some blocks. So if she is, if if I see her see uh, flowing those emotions in front of DT, and still she is having the blocks, how do I understand this thing? Right? That's a hard one. We have to understand. It's really hard to understand. But one thing we can say. She might be already beyond the rules and regulations, for having spontaneous attractions to Krishna. That's possible also when people immediately come in contact with some feature of devotional service. But some people come like that and they have that experience at the beginning and then it, then, then it disappears. It's their initial experience of coming into devotional service and then Krishna, they're open because they're wide open and they're able to absorb the spiritual energy of the deity or the holy name or the atmosphere of the temple. And then they experience uh, transcendental emotions. 
And there's others, and which I think is more in your category of your mother, who continuously experience it each and every time. So that's more like they're pretty much beyond the rules and regulations. And they have that natural attraction for Krishna. But that natural attraction has to manifest it in serving Krishna. It's not enough just to experience the, the emotional attraction that Krishna has presence uh, because uh, love means to serve. And so if it hasn't reached that stage, then there is a block there. So some service though. So you have to, you know, see, is your mother offering prayers? Is she's cooking for Krishna or she's thinking about Krishna, writing about Krishna, doing things for Krishna? Then, 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 then that bhakti is already on spontaneous platform. It's not even, it's not a matter of rules and regulations anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj, she does all that. Uh, she does all that with the deities at our home. Uh, oh, that's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she does all that. She is very much fond of the kirtan, her favorite. That is her favorite thing, I think, uh, Kirtan. Uh, but just that she is not able to accept the fact that a guru is required to, uh, you know, for her advancement. So there is what she's blocking. Yeah, maybe at some point she'll come to that understanding that it's, that the guru can take her to another level. I've seen, I've seen devotees in India, only in India it happens. And they're like your mother and they're going through their whole life, very devotional. I'll give you an example, not in India, but in, uh, but in, uh, I'll even explain the whole thing in detail. And this was, this was Raghupati, my, my disciple. Some of you know him. His, uh, his grandfather who was doing programs in London for 40 years. He was holding a regular Sangha at his house for 40 years. He had deities there. He was very devotional throughout, the, throughout his whole life. Never took a spiritual master. Never took a spiritual master. And just, um, this, this happened about six months ago and when I was in London I got a call from Raghupati his father is his grandfather is in the last stages of life and the relatives want him to have a guru before he leaves the planet so they asked me to give a name and to speak some words of, of giving their grandfather initiation and I did I gave him a name and I and just after that he disappeared from the planet, uh, he was and he was somewhat unable to respond to anything external at that time. He had gone. He had gone, become completely, uh, what we say, not in a coma, but he wasn't able to respond to re respond to external stimuli so much. And I've seen that done just a lot of times with people in the last stage of their life. <laughs> Uh, they just somehow or other, the, the relatives arrange it or somehow they arrange it and then they get, a, they get a guru and then they get a name. And of course, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> He's supposed to be doing it in a conscious way. But the tradition in India is uh, a little bit different than what Srila Prabhupada has given us in terms of a practical understanding of the entire science that people um, take Krishna into their heart. As Prabhupada said, if you're born in India, you're naturally Krishna conscious. <laughs> you're naturally Krishna conscious um, to some degree or other. But then what you do with your life will either bring it out or bury it more. <laughs> like that. So, um, so you'll, you'll see not every situation is the same. Okay. So I'm just giving that example. 
Yes, Maharaj. I just hope she is a very, very uh, uh, dedicated devotee. I just hope she takes up her devotional life more seriously than she is doing. And she, uh, yeah, as long as she doesn't have any of the bad habits that we ask people to get rid of, like no intoxications, like that, no meat eating, like that. No, Mara, she doesn't have that. It was uh, just that she is eating the onion garlic. <laughs> Thank you. Every every Indian in India eats onion and garlic. <laughs> <laughs> right, Tiptesh, I think. <laughs> yes, Mara. <laughs> so, a problem, the reason, and sometimes we ask, well, why no onion and garlic? Because these foods are in the mode of passion and they, ex they excite the uh, they excite the senses, and it becomes more difficult to concentrate and practice devotional service because of these, uh, and they excite this, the senses and the organs of the body. That's one of the reasons. There's foods in the modes of passion, foods in the modes of ignorance, and foods in the modes of goodness. So our regulative principles are geared to, uh, for people to accept food in the mode of goodness. And Prabhupada makes that point in the Bhagavad Gita, there's a whole 17th chapter, you can read it, verses 8 through 10 in the 17th chapter. Three verses in one, he describes foods in the different modes. For those who are practicing devotional service, they are recommended to take foods in the mode of goodness. Why? Because foods in the mode of goodness are the only foods that could be offered to Krishna. You can't offer foods in the modes of, that are in the mode of passion and ignorance to Krishna. You have to offer food in the mode of goodness. And that's one of the reasons why we don't engage in those things because Krishna doesn't accept these, these foods in the lower modes. And the other reason is they have a tendency to excite these senses uh, more which makes it hard for meditation and prayer. But if she's been doing it all her life, then <laughs> what can you say? <laughs> oh, no, and I think uh, me taking up Krishna consciousness is definitely making a difference to her. So I'm just hoping, I, I always tell him that, uh, Mom Krishna consciousness is anyways natural to you. So I I, I am expecting she'll uh, some or the other time she will be there. <laughs> I think so too. I think just by your example, she'll get curious and try some of the things you're doing. <laughs> yes, my God. I think but, but you you can't say she's not a devotee. She is definitely a devotee. There's no question about that. Yes, yes, definitely. The mercy will flow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Sri Devi. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Maharaj. Thank you for pointing out how important it is to understand the blocks that we may uh, be not even Suda. aware of. That have... Hare Krishna, Where's Maharaj, me? your voice is breaking. Yeah. Your voice is not oh, breaking. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think okay, uh, go ahead and take someone else's question. After. Okay. I don't see any questions, Guru Maharaj, here. Um, yeah, see if she, she yeah, was almost. Try, try again, Sri Devi. 
Yeah, I think she is, uh, she just locked off. Probably she will join in just a couple of minutes. She is coming back on. Any other questions or comments Dory's want to make? Yeah, I don't see any questions. Yeah. So, Gurumaja, I have a question about blockages. Uh, so, um, blockages at subtle level. Um, uh, we, I mean, trying to understand, okay, we have blockages we know, but still we are finding it very difficult to come out of those blockages. So as you said, again, like uh, blockages in order to cross, uh, you know, go over the blockages, we need to have like um, um, Krishna's mercy and the uh, spiritual master's mercy, or like, even though we try it, we hard, find it very hard, especially blockages at subtle level. Yeah, prayer is very powerful. Pray. Yeah. Pray to the Lord, pray to the spiritual master. Sincerely offer your prayers. That will that will help you overcome these blocks. Okay. And then look for the practical activity, which will also help to help overcome the blocks. Okay, so Practical, I'm sorry, I couldn't get that. Practical activity. Yeah, uh, in other words, what do I have to do mm -hmm. to get over these things? Practical. And the other one is the, the more devotional thing is to uh, pray to Krishna for mm -hmm. the strength, the ability, the, uh, the mercy you need to overcome these blocks. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good much, yeah. Thank you. Um, Mataji is back. Sriti Mataji, uh, please go ahead. Uh, Mataji, you are on mute. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Except my humble obeisance is all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for this really important class on looking at the blocks because we can be around for years and not even maybe realize what blocks we have. So my question is, Whatever level we reached in our previous lifetime, we are picking up from that point. But how do we know that we have actually overcome that block and we are going forward and we are not uh, stuck at that same point or, or arrested because of some uh, uh, mental block towards uh, maybe the spiritual master or, or the process of bhakti itself? How we can uh, know that we are not uh, being put back by those things which stopped us in our previous lifetime? You can ask, you can explain what you feel may be a block and ask to your spiritual master and find out, get some practical advice. The other thing is that you can also experience whether you're moving forward or not. If you're not moving forward and you and, there's, and you still feel like you're stuck, then obviously that block is still there. Well, I would use the example, as you're eating, you're getting your strength, you're getting nourishment, you're becoming happy. So as you're making advancement, you should be more detached from material life. You should be more attracted to Krishna. And you should be at the same time uh, feeling less of the effects of uh, the difficulties of material existence. So as the fever goes down, the body becomes normal. The temperature again re is regained. So the body becomes uh, peaceful. The body becomes happy. The body becomes uh, free from anxiety. These are all indications of one's progress in spiritual life. The, be the body becomes eager to associate with devotees, eager to serve, eager to chant, eager to uh, associate and discuss philosophical teachings. These are all indications of one is making nice advancement in devotional service. You see, huh? you know, we have this program every day and every, it's open to so many devotees, but how many are coming on every day? And how many are actually not even coming on at all? So, in other words, their eagerness is not there. Or maybe some of them are 
they can't make it, so they listen to the recording later on. There are some like that, but there are some that just, they don't come and they don't listen to the recordings also. <laughs> so, they may have come in the past and for whatever reason. So uh, their attachment to the material life is still there. Their attachment to Krishna is also there to some degree. So there's, it's like mixed, but as we mentioned, as the, as, the, as the food is going into the body, hunger is being satisfied. So as we're making advancement, we're experiencing the happiness of Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that means if we are not making progress, we are still being held back by something, we must very actively work on those things. Otherwise, the same thing will happen in this lifetime. That's, that's actually devotional service, yes. To see what is it in my devotional service that I'm still, is it something material I'm still clinging on to? Is there a wrong conception that I have about how to execute devotional service? One has to know how to execute the process too, not just know the process, but how to execute it. There's where the spiritual master comes in. Mm. Like I've been trying to get you to my pool for years. So, <laughs> so when you, as soon as you get there, you'll experience a little uh, upraise me in your consciousness. It'll happen automatically because you got through that block. <laughs> Finally, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> it is all your mercy and grace. I don't know that I would have any courage on my own. It's just that you need to do it. <laughs> What's the countdown now? How many days left? <laughs> five. <laughs> five days. Okay, five days to liberation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Guru Maharaj. And I'm still scared. <laughs> um, Slovenia will always be here, so anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely true that uh, I was not keen at all. Well, I was keen to listen, but something was holding me back. That is true. I was scared, more scared than I am now. Not that I'm not scared, I'm a little less scared now. I don't think you're scared. I think you're more eager now. That's true. Yeah. Material attachments go deep. And they're so deep, we can't even recognize them. Mm. Going to the Holy Dham will actually mean I can engage myself better in devotional service, I can get rid of some material blocks that are holding me back and I can actually um, try to acquire some good qualities seeing other very elevated and advanced devotees in the dham. So all that will actually help in pushing me forward in, in bhakti. That's secondary. Primary is, is the instructions of the spiritual master. That's primary. Mm. 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 So simply by following the instructions of the spiritual master, we will get the mercy. Yasya prashada bhagavat prashado yasya prashadam nagati kutoki. Dhyayan stu abstasya yasya stri sandhyam vande guru shri charanaravinda. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Your future is bright. <laughs> Good to hear that. <laughs> right now you got a we got a 25 watt bulb on. You'll get up to a hundred watt bulb after a while. Okay. Oh, I'm looking forward to that, Guru Maharaj. That is wonderful news. <laughs> Thank you so much. My humble obeisance. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji. Um, Guru Maharaj, I don't see any questions. Um, and we can end here. It's actually 25 yeah. minutes almost after the hour. I just like to mention, Diptesh, write me a letter about what happened with, with your experiences with uh, Mayapur and the books and everything. And then once I receive the letter, we can take it to the next level. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, I hope you get well. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, if you don't have to wear that uh, muslin, it's you can. It's uh, actually it's good. both kids. Uh, both kids already tested positive, Guru Maharaj. So and kids uh, have my, my parents also at home. So I'm just making sure that. You know, I hope you can breathe. Problem. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm okay. Okay. Just making okay. sure already two kids are quarantining upstairs. So we're just making sure that you know all four adults downstairs are you know. Just oh, making okay. sure we don't. Yeah. Take if there's any sickness, um, take some zinc, yeah. vitamin C, yeah. vitamin D, selenium, yeah. some exercise, drink enough water. Yeah. And if it's really severe, try to get one particular drug. It's called ivermectin. Ivermectin cures. <laughs> The virus in two days with no problem at all. What, what, is, what, is, that, what, is, that, what is the medicine name with Maharaj? Ivermectin. I-V-E-R-M-E-C-T-I-N. Ivermectin. It's not easy to get, but if you can get it. The devotees, there was an outbreak of the virus in the Chicago temple. One devotee had ivermectin and she distributed and everybody got well. Okay. So I'll, look, I'll, look, I'll, look for, I'll look for that. Yes, I V E R I V E R M E C T I N. M E C T I N. I've spoken, I spoke to doctors, I've had experience with ivermectin. It is the drug. There it is. Shave C. Davy wrote it up there. Yeah, the you. only problem is it's not so easy to get, but if you can get it, yeah, it's the best. People in India can get ivermectin really fast because I, it's been known that ivermectin has helped the Indian continent tremendously with that virus. So if you're in India, it's easy to get easier to get ivermectin than in the Western countries. That's good, Mike. Yes, there is no medicine, just you know, quarantine and you know. Yeah. It's, it it's works. Out, so. It works fast. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so thank you very much. And tomorrow is Tuesday. We'll see. We'll continue with her. And I think um, we have Srimati is still there. On Friday, we have a particular uh, class. I'll be speaking about um, my upcoming book, which is still being in its print and printing stage uh, about natural living. I'll speak about that in relationship to the social and political and economic conditions that are presently uh, circulating around the planet. And it's mostly about my book, so that'll be on uh, Friday. Uh, like that. Thank you very much. I link on Satya Bhama Mataji. Okay, and is, there is also something else that is that has come up. I'm not sure. Oh yes, the Harrisburg program. We can announce that now. The the, the change in the schedule. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj, yeah, the Harrisburg class. Um, I'll announce before the two days before Guru Maharaj, so that devotees will remember. Okay. Uh, like uh, instead of 27th, we'll have 24th. The class will be on 24th uh, Monday. I'll announce two days before Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. You too, Guru Maharaj. You take care as well.